greetings of the day to all of you we have been studying the isolated dc to dc converters which are part of the syllabus uh, for both applied power electronics for mtech as well as advanced power electronics for btech in the last lecture we have studied the flyback converter topology which is an isolated dc to dc converter circuit in bug boost um, topology uh, but the flyback converter circuit is not available in high power ratings because it can carry only the magnetizing component of current. Uh, on the contrary, today we are going to study the forward converter circuit which has both the load component of current as well as the magnetizing component of current. Therefore, the forward converter is an isolated DC to DC converter that is available in high current ratings and hence high power ratings. The forward converter, however, is a buck-derived converter which gives output voltages that are only lesser than or equal to the load voltage. So it is a buck uh, converter with isolation, uh, in, which is provided by means of uh, pulse transformers uh, in the circuit. So let's move on to analysis of the forward converter circuit. This is the circuit we have an input voltage VDC that excites the primary winding of the pulse transformer through a switch S. Then we have a secondary winding of the transformer which is coupled to the primary winding. And the dot conventions, please make sure that you are well aware of the dot conventions because they matter a lot in the circuit analysis. Uh, we have a diode, another diode in shunt an inductor at the load end a capacitor across the load and the load itself so you have two diodes d1 and d2 both of which are fast recovery diodes which means diodes that have to operate at very high switching frequencies the same as that of the switch so they have to be high frequency diodes uh, it is assumed that the number of turns in the primary winding is N1 and the number of turns in the secondary winding is N2. There is an L and a C at the output side and then there is voltage V0 across the load having say resistance R. Now uh, this is voltage input voltage VDC. Now we'll begin with uh, the assumption that this transformer is an ideal transformer. So as to simplify our analysis for now, we'll later move on to the non-ideal transformer case. So assuming that this transformer is ideal, it means that the core uh, material has a relative permeability tending to infinity, which means that the transformer does not require any magnetizing current. That means it does not require any magnetizing current to establish flux. Therefore, the flux in the machine is assumed constant and even if there is no flow of current through the transformer, even if there is no magnetizing current, there will never be flux collapse. So we are uh, completely, you know, disregarding the concept of flux collapse. We are assuming an ideal transformer, which obviously does not have, exist. But uh, for simplification in our analysis, we are assuming that um, there is no flux collapse in this machine and the flux remains constant irrespective of the currents being carried and we also assume that there is no leakage flux and you know uh, the transformer is ideal in every uh, possible way so there is no leakage flux also with these assumptions we begin the analysis of this circuit so let's say from zero to dts the pulse to the switch is high and we can call it the energy storage interval so let's see how the circuit will look like so you have the source voltage and the primary winding is directly excited through the switch being conducting therefore on the primary side we have voltage vdc directly appearing across the primary winding from the principle of induction there will be n2 upon n1 term times vdc that is the voltage across the secondary winding and again this is the this point will be plus because of the dot convention because this is plus and therefore it will forward bias the diode d1 and now energy will start flowing in this direction such that the inductor starts storing energy 
and then part of this energy could be dumped into the capacitor and part of it goes into the load. Like I said, in almost every circuit that has an output that looks like this, that the capacitor may either be taking in energy or giving out energy depending upon the energy deficits on its either side. But what we do know for sure is that this inductor right now is storing energy. So the inductor current is increasing. The inductor current is also the secondary current. So I2, which is the secondary current, the load component of current, it is flowing. So the secondary winding is electrically active. And so is the primary winding. So the primary winding is also electrically active. And it is equal to the current flowing through the primary winding is equal to the reflected component of the load current. So the reflected component of load current is also flowing through the primary winding and there is no magnetization current so we are not adding up anything over here. There is no magnetizing current because the transformer is ideal. Now this inductor is storing energy. The flux is constant. It's an ideal transformer. And the voltage across this inductor over here is VL is equal to N2 times N2 upon N1 times VDC minus V0. If you want to analyze it further, you can, you know, find out voltages across the diode VD2 we we because it's blocking voltage and uh, so on. So this is from 0 to DTS. So this inductor is storing energy and uh, flux is established, assumed constant in the core. And there is load component of current, okay? So now moving on from DTS to TS. The pulse to the device is withdrawn, so there is an open circuit over here. And even though there is an open circuit, there is no collapse of flux because we have, we have assumed that it is an ideal transformer where flux is maintained constant. And once flux is maintained, there is, it doesn't get collapsed. So there is no collapse of flux. Because the primary winding is inactive electrically, we have switched off the, sw device, uh, the, sw you know, the main switch. Therefore, there is no current flowing through the primary winding. And hence, there is no current flowing through the secondary winding. So the secondary winding is also electrically not active. And it ceases to forward bias the diode D1, which in turn tends to interrupt the flow of current through the inductor as a result of which there will be a huge LDI by DT kick reverse polarity that will you know ensure that the inductor gets some way of releasing its energy it will forward bias the diode D2 in this way the inductor will ensure that D2 goes into conduction and the inductor will continue to release energy like this dump it into the capacitor and into the load so we definitely know that from dts to ts the inductor is releasing its energy we are using the same conventions but we know that the inductor voltage has switched and uh, on the primary side on the on the you know the transformer side there is um, there is no flux collapse so therefore there is no emf induced in the primary and secondary windings now right now the voltage across the inductor we definitely know inductor is releasing energy so the inductor uh, current is falling but this time the inductor current is not equal to the secondary current the secondary current is zero and so is the primary current equal to zero right but the inductor current is definitely flowing and it is falling and the inductor is releasing its energy and the voltage across the inductor right now is if you see it is minus of v naught which obviously tells you that the inductor voltage is negative and the inductor is releasing its energy so this was when the um, transformer was assumed completely ideal. Now let me uh, apply the volt second balance on this inductor for now. So if we apply the volt second balance on the inductor, we have N2 upon N1 times VDC minus V0 for the interval DTS. And for the remaining interval, that is 1 minus DTS, it is minus of V0. So the whole thing should be equal to 0. If we solve this DN2 upon N1 VDC minus DV0 minus V0 plus DV0 is equal to 0. 
so voltage v naught is equal to n2 upon n1 times d times vdc the equation tells you automatically that it's a buck derived converter uh, for uh, you know duty ratios between 0 to 1 you can have step down voltages uh, step down of the input voltage at the output and you can also do course control by changing the turns ratio so if you uh, you know if you have to get if you have say 100 volts input and you want only very small voltage say 5 volts at the output you can you know use a transformer winding that steps down this n2 upon n1 you choose it like that that it steps down this dc um, by say 50% or more than 50% say it steps it down to 10 volts and then you can choose a, uh, for the fine control choose this duty ratio to uh, say 0.5 and then it will give you 5 volts at the output. So the turns ratio of the pulse transformer will do coarse control and uh, the duty ratio will give you fine control over the output voltage. So you may not have to use very precise values of D up to five, six decimal places. You can do the course control through N2 upon N1 and the fine control through uh, the duty ratio. So for now, we know that V0 is equal to N2 upon N times N2 upon N1 into D times VDC, which is a buck derived uh, converter. So the forward converter is a buck derived converter. But till now, we have assumed that the converter uh, transformer is ideal in nature. Its relative permeability of the core is infinite. There is no magnetizing current. There is no flux collapse, even if the current through the transformer becomes zero. However, practical transformers are not like that. When, uh, if you talk about a practical transformer, it will require some magnetizing current. So when there is a practical transformer, what will happen is that um, when you switch the device on, uh, there will be flow of current in the primary circuit and obviously there will be flow of current in the secondary circuit the secondary current will be i2 but the primary current will be reflected i2 that is say i2 dash plus the magnetizing component of current and then when you switch the device off at that time there will be collapse of flux and because of the collapse of flux uh, you know your uh, uh, your EMFs will be induced in the primary and secondary windings and it is necessary that you prevent the flow, uh, collapse of flux by you know uh, transferring the primary uh, primary uh, what do you say the uh, magnetizing current from the primary because you've opened the primary you have to transfer the magnetizing current from the primary to the secondary uh, but you generally cannot transfer it to the secondary because you know the conventions the dot conventions and the placement of the diode is such that current cannot flow in this direction therefore uh, when we talk about a practical circuit of a forward converter we need a tertiary winding to take care of the nd5 idt kick which is the kick uh, in the windings the emf induced in the windings due to you know a flux collapse they may, that may happen when you switch this off so therefore we need a tertiary winding which has something which looks something like this okay please remember the dot convention here is downwards opposite to the dot conventions over here and the diode say call it d3 is connected in this direction okay so a practical forward converter will have a tertiary winding d3 that takes care of uh, you know it prevents a flux collapse or you can say that it takes care that a uh, transformer energy you know that is maintained so let's see from zero to dts now let's uh, quickly analyze the circuit from zero to dts the switch uh, pulse to the switch is high so you have the primary winding is conducting it is electrically active voltage across the primary winding this winding is directly connected across the source so voltage across the primary winding is vdc and the dot is positive so this dot is positive and because this dot is positive over here on the tertiary winding therefore the diode is reverse biased because the cathode of the diode is positive so the diode is reverse biased and it is not conducting uh, but because the primary winding is electrically active, uh, there will be flux, establishment of flux, a magnetizing current will flow 
we are talking about a practical transformer so magnetizing current will flow because uh, of that the, by the principle of induction there will be emf induced in all the other windings because all these three windings are on the same core so there will be emf equal to n2 upon n1 times vdc in the secondary winding with the dot being positive in the tertiary winding it will be n3 say it has n3 number of turns it will be n3 upon n1 into VDC and then because of this plus over here the diode will go into conduction and the remaining thing is the same that the inductor will start storing energy and we have the capacitor and the load and this diode over here will be open so in the first interval you have Again, voltage across the inductor is N2 upon N1 VDC minus V0. Nothing is changing for from the perspective of this inductor. So I'm not going to repeat that analysis, but I'm going to focus on this part that is the windings. Okay. So in this interval, the inductor voltage is the same. We know that the secondary current is flowing. That is the load component of current that is flowing. It is also equal to the inductor current and it is rising. There is also primary current flowing. Uh, that means both secondary uh, winding is electrically active. Primary winding is also electrically active. It has the load component of current I2 dash plus the magnetizing current drawn by the transformer. And third uh, tertiary winding does not have any current because the diode is reverse biased in the ter tertiary winding but it is magnetically active because the primary current has established flux and that flux is linking to all the three windings so one and two are electrically and magnetically active but uh, the winding tertiary winding three is only magnetically active not electrically conducting uh, the you know the inductor is storing energy what about the diodes the diode vd1 is conducting voltage across diode d2 vd2 is if you see here this is vd2 it will be minus n2 upon n1 times vdc the minus sign indicates that uh, it is blocking negative voltages and diodes can block only negative voltages the voltage across diode d3 if you see that it is this is VDC, right? So we have VDC minus plus, minus plus, plus N3 upon N1 times VDC minus plus, plus voltage across diode D3 is equal to zero. So this gives you voltage across diode D3 is equal to minus times 1 plus N3 upon N1 times VDC. So this is VD2 and VD3 d1 is conducting and the switch s is also conducting now what happens is that uh, at dts you would draw the pulse to the device so from dts to ts the pulse to the device is withdrawn So what happens now is because it's a practical transformer it looks like the magnetizing current has become zero and uh, because of that the flux has collapsed and because the flux has collapsed there will be a huge negative nd5 by dt kick in the windings as a result all the dots will become negative which were positive previously so when this dot becomes negative it reverse biases this diode so the diode does not conduct but yes the inductor voltage which will also switch and it will forward bias the other diode d2 and this circuit remains electrically active so is inductor ki energy release hone ka path mil gaya lekin jo hai nd5 by dt ka kick aaya tha that energy has not been released so somehow you have to ensure that flux collapse doesn't happen. Just like, you know, you don't want to want the inductor current to collapse. You don't want the transformer flux to collapse over here. For that, the tertiary winding will take on the role. Otherwise, if you have tertiary winding nahi ho, or a practical transformer, you will have so much high magnitude ka ND5 by DT kick that it will burn switch. Ko jalaega. It will burn off your switch. To prevent that, you have the tertiary winding whose dot will also become negative because it was also associated with the same flux being wound on the same core. And because this becomes negative, 
the cathode becomes negative, it forward biases the diode in the tertiary winding. And as a result of that, the tertiary winding becomes electrically active. So the tertiary winding gets directly connected across the source and the voltage across the tertiary winding is VDC. Therefore, from the principle, this is the electrically active winding right now. From the principle of induction, the voltage across primary winding will be N1 upon N3 times VDC and that of the secondary winding will be N2 upon N3 times VDC. Let me reiterate, the primary winding is electrically not active. The secondary winding is electrically not active, both currents are zero, but the tertiary winding right now is electrically active and uh, you know it is ensuring that the magnetizing current of current continues to flow through the tertiary winding and the flux collapse does not happen. Now let's uh, see what happens during this interval. So we had the first interval documented over here. The second interval we can document say in this part. So I2 becomes zero, there is no uh, current flowing, but yes, IL continues to flow through the inductor and it is decreasing because the inductor is releasing its energy. Talking about uh, the primary current I1, it is again equal to zero. And the I3, the uh, tertiary current, it is equal to IM, which is now decreasing in magnitude, okay? In the first interval, IM was increasing, flux was being set up and now the flux is decreasing um, as uh, the tertiary winding, through the tertiary winding. Uh, um, regarding the inductor voltage, it is again minus V0, the same analysis as that for an ideal transformer. The switch is not conducting, so what is the voltage across the switch? Let me see that. The voltage across the switch is, uh, let's see, this is VDC, so VDC all the dots are negative minus plus minus plus this is vdc plus n1 upon n3 times vdc this is plus minus is equal to v switch so voltage across the switch is 1 plus n1 by n3 times vdc again positive voltage it's an igbt or a mosfet that can block only positive voltages uh, what about diode D1 because D2 and D3 are conducting so voltage across diode D1 is this is N2 upon N3 times VDC plus VD1 is equal to 0 so diode D1 is blocking negative voltage that is minus N2 upon N3 times VDC now let's try to draw all these waveforms. So I'll split the waveforms into two parts because I don't have enough space. These are the pulses to the main device. So this is zero to DTS and this is DTS to TS. In the first interval, Uh, the inductor current IL is rising and this is IL and the inductor current is falling in the second interval. We want this inductor current to be continuous but we want uh, the flux to be discontinuous so that flux resetting takes place which I have already discussed in the previous class that we want in terms of the flux we want isolated DC to DC converters to be into DCM so that the core of the transformer does not saturate. So this is IL which is in CCM, you want it to be in CCM and then uh, if we draw the primary current of the converter, the primary current in the first interval is, uh, let's first draw the secondary current I2. So the secondary current in the first uh, interval is the same as the inductor current and in the second interval the current falls to zero, the secondary current falls to zero. If we talk about the primary current, in the first interval, the primary current is the reflected component of uh, secondary current that is I2 dash plus the magnetizing current, which is again increasing. And in the second interval, the primary current also falls to zero. If we talk about the magnetizing current, 
in the first interval it is equal to the primary current I, uh, you know the magnetizing current will be it will be increasing because it will be establishing flux in the machine it will be carried by the primary winding and in the second interval it will be carried by the tertiary winding and ideally you desire that it should fall to zero before the magnetizing component of current should fall to zero before uh, your next pulse comes so that there is flux resetting this is the curve for i m or for flux first it is carried by the primary winding then it is carried by the tertiary winding and then in the what else do we draw uh, let's draw yeah the voltage is across the diodes and the switches so the first interval let's draw voltage across the switch the switch is conducting from zero to dts so there is no voltage across the switch in the uh, interval dts to beta ts when there is magnetizing co component of current that time that is the voltage across the switch is 1 plus n1 upon n3 times vdc and when the magnetizing current is gone that time it will only be vdc because there will be no emf induced in uh, the tertiary winding so it will be only vdc this is voltage across the switch similarly voltage across diode d1 in the first interval the diode is conducting so voltage is uh, zero in the second interval it is minus of n2 upon n3 times vdc in the third interval it is again zero because the diode the third tertiary um, winding is inactive and then it's like floating it's neither conducting this zero doesn't mean that it is you know conducting it means that it's neither conducting nor is it blocking some voltage and then we have vd2 in the first interval it is minus n2 upon n1 times vdc then it will be zero when the inductor is releasing energy through it and it will be zero throughout because the inductor will continue to release energy through diode d2 all the way up till ts the inductor is in ccm please do not forget that in the first interval it will be minus of n2 upon n1 times vdc if we talk about diode d3 in the first interval it will be this voltage in the second interval it is uh, conducting and it is conducting because it's carrying the magnetizing component of current so it will be this voltage in the second interval only from this interval to this interval and thereafter it will become zero so i would suggest i've not drawn it you know uh, very clearly here because i did not have space i've verbally spoken more i'm sure you can draw uh, the whole thing on your own so this was about uh, the waveforms now uh, one more thing is that I told you that the inductor is supposed to be in, uh, you know, uh, in CCM, but the flux is supposed to be in DCM so that flux resetting takes place in the forward converter. Now, for flux resetting to take place, uh, the increase in flux should be equal to the decrease in flux. And you know that uh, the increase in flux or magnetizing current happens from zero to DTS. But you want the decrease in flux to happen sooner than Ts so that it falls to its residual value, which is say ideally you can assume residual flux to be zero. So now uh, when from zero, when we talk about zero to Dts, us time pay, it is your primary winding that is setting up flux. So the primary winding has n1 number of turns and it is, you know, increasing flux d5 by dt is positive okay this is the voltage across the uh, primary winding and this voltage if you see the circuit it is equal to this is tertiary winding this is primary winding and this voltage is directly e equal to vdc so the increase in flux during this interval is VDC interval duration upon, upon N1 right now when we talk about uh, the other interval the flux is decreasing and it is decreasing through the tertiary winding so the tertiary winding is active 
voltage across the tertiary winding over here all the dots are negative voltage across the tertiary winding is vdc and the flux is decreasing so you have n3 times d5 by dt is equal to vdc again so decrease in flux right now is vdc times 1 minus dts upon n3 for flux resetting to take place this interval should not be 1 minus d but it should be beta minus d where beta is less than 1 right when the flux is decreasing so the flux should decrease not at ts but at beta ts right so for flux resetting to happen for flux resetting the increase in flux from 0 to dts should be equal to the decrease in flux from uh, dts to beta ts so we have vdc dts upon n1 is equal to vdc beta minus d upon n3 ts so you have n3 upon n1 d is equal to beta plus d so beta is equal to 1 plus n3 upon n1 d for flux resetting to be happening before ts that means for uh, dcm which you want flux resetting up to dcm mein hona chahi, discontinuous conduction mode beta should be less than 1 so d should be less than 1 upon 1 plus n3 upon n1 अगर आप इस कंडीशन को मेंटेन करोगे कि हर बारी आपका ड्यूटी रेशियो 1 अपॉन 1 प्लस n3 बाय n1 से कम होगा तो इन दैट केस यू विल ऑटोमेटिकली एंश्योर दैट फ्लक्स रीसेटिंग विल हैपन एवरी टाइम बिफोर द नेक्स्ट साइकिल ऑफ स्विचिंग बिगिंस तो उससे आप अपने कोर की सैचुरेशन प्रिवेंट करोगे राइट सो दिस वॉज अबाउट द फॉरवर्ड कन्वर्टर सर्किट एंड दिस वॉज अबाउट हैविंग फ्लक्स रीसेटिंग इन द फॉरवर्ड कन्वर्टर सर्किट Again, there is only unidirectional flow of magnetizing current. Therefore, there is unidirectional core excitation. Just may have been a BH curve draw. Kya tha? It will be something like this. Uh, when we talk about flux resetting happening, so this is flux. This is the residual flux, and this is the magnetizing uh, current or intensity, whatever you want to call it. I am. So this was about the forward converter circuit, and with this uh, we uh, complete two important circuits into um, you know in uh, isolated DC to DC converters. That is the forward converter and the flyback converter. We have some more converter circuits left, but for midterm I think we should stop at this, and uh, um, th these will be you know relevant for both M Tech and B Tech. But um, for masters this will be in the midterm syllabus and. For bachelors, this will not be in the midterm syllabus. Okay, thank you very much.